last month we talked about Lock and Key, a super fun series that's about Sherlock Holmes versus James Moriarty. Before they become the greatest detective and criminal mastermind this world has ever known. Super fun, you need to totally check it out. This month we're going to be talking about Jinx by Amy McMullock. Let's see, have you ever imagined having a pet that also has the same capabilities as your smartphone? Imagine having a dog, a golden retriever, a parrot, or a cat that's not only your best friend that snuggles with you at night and is super cuddly and the, your favorite thing in the world, but it can also hold all your contacts for you, it can text for you, you can make phone calls for you, it can even look things up and get on the internet for you, and who needs, who needs actual physical books when you're animal, your pet phone thing can even have actual textbooks on it. That is called a Baku. And those animals actually exist in the world, in the, in, in the world that, in this book, Jinxed. The company called Monka is actually responsible for making all these crazy high-tech Austin Bakus. And there's a girl named Lacey, named Lacey Chu whose absolute dream in the world is to work for Monka and to make her very own Baku. And so her dream is to go to Perfectus Academy, which is the number one school in the world that you learn to actually make a Baku. Super awesome. But when she's rejected and her dreams are crushed, what does she do now? Well, unbeknownst to what Lacey is going through, something sinister is happening in the world of Monka. And I'm gonna read you the prologue of this book and I'm gonna let you get a feel for it yourself. She burst through the trees, cradling the creature in her arms. A whine of a pulse gun sounded in the wood. She ducked and the shot flew over her head, obliterating the trunk of a beech tree in front of her. Panic rose in her throat. They weren't just out to destroy the creature. They were going to kill her too. She kept running, her feet slipping inside the blue plastic overshoes she hadn't had time to remove before bolting from the lab. She'd known this day would come, She'd crossed the line so far, it was no longer even a mark on the horizon, but she still hadn't been ready. The creature vibrated against her chest, a red light pulsing against its hot metal skin like a heartbeat. It wriggled in her arms, trying to escape as if it too knew what was coming, but she tightened her grip. She just had to make it to the other side of the ravine, to the emergency car that would, make, that would take her to safety. The next shot hit her in the shoulder, and she wasn't sure who screamed louder, her or her creature. She stumbled, one leg collapsing underneath her as her foot sank into a crevice hidden by a carpet of fallen, fallen leaves. She dared to glimpse down, and her heart almost stopped. The creature's metal body was smoking, the acrid stench of burned electronics filling her nostrils. The pulse guns were doing their job, destroying it from the inside out. She pulled her foot free and pressed on. The bridge was so close, she could feel the rumble of the trains as they passed underneath. Yet the heavy boot steps of the men behind her were louder still. Come on, come on, said the voice crackling in her ear. She must have come into range of her partner's communication device. She forced her legs to pump harder, ignoring the sticky, wet stab of pain in her side. Barely had her toe crossed the threshold onto the bridge when, arm, when alarms wailed, hidden IP protection sensors blaring from the tree line. Traps sprung from the ground, nets that coiled around her legs, tripping her down. I'm down, she screamed in her earpiece. Help me! Cutting comms, link destruction in process. Almost as, after, almost as an afterthought, he added, sorry. And then the line went dead. Another pulse thumped her in the back, launching her forward and sending her creature flying from her arms. She had no choice but to watch as the smoking hunk of metal disappeared off the side of the bridge. Her assailants ran past her now, flinging themselves as the, as the railing lean, leaning out over the edge and watching the blaze of the sparks sent up as a metal monster hit electrified track. It was gone. Her life's work destroyed. The men turned back to her, gun barrels leveling at her head. She closed her eyes and accepted the inevitable. Down on the tracks below, the creature shuddered with one final pulse of life. As a train thundered down the tracks toward it, it, had, it only had the energy for the faintest of sound. It purred. 
So, Lacey has been rejected from Perfectus Academy, much and her heart is broken. But then one day, she stumbles across the broken body of a Baku. It is a cat Baku, and she takes it home, she repairs it, and she names it Jinx. And then all of a sudden, she's accepted to Perfectus, and as she's bonding with Jinx, she's realizing something's different about him. He's not just an ordinary Baku that can cuddle with her and that can help her get on the internet. It's almost as, as if he's alive. And so as she's settling into Perfectus, and she's doing all of her new classes, and she's learning all about her new school, and she's battling her Baku Jinx against other her classmates' Bakus in this really cool competition, she's realizing that Jinx is something, is, is, could be part of something sinister, something really, really secret that Malka doesn't want the world to know about. And as you can see from this prologue, it can be serious if other people find out about the secret. So can Lacey protect Jinx, her Baku, along with still accomplishing her live stream? Check out Jinx at Thornton Library to find out.